just wave our hands this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for the good each and every one of us. Oh, Praise the Lord. We come to worship this morning. Amen. Truly, God has been good. Thank you, Jesus. This time we're going to get our scripture read by Evangelist Jackie this morning. Let us all stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory, God. Hallelujah.
Whatever it is, it's on the table. Yeah. Praise the Lord at this time. Minister, watch greeting with a hearty amen. Amen. I choose you again and again. I choose you again and again. You mean so much to me. Choose you again. Oh, I choose you again. 
inspires me, he yeah. encourages me, and no matter what I go through, to always give God the praise. That's right. Amen. I also thank and praise God for our assistant pastor, Minister Simeon. Amen. And him having wisdom, knowing when to sit pastor down so he don't hurt himself. That's again. right. That's right. I thank and praise God for each and every one of you here this morning. Amen. Most importantly, I thank and praise God just for who he is. That's right. I thank God for salvation. Yes. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because it's power to live right. That's right. I used to make so many excuses that I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that, but I realized that with God, all things are possible. All things. And you know, we like to use that when we need a miracle in our life, but... It's possible to live holy. That's hey, I mean. all it's glory good. to God. It's possible to walk right every day of my life. Yes, it is. It's possible to talk right every day of my life. Oh, come on, With men, these things may be impossible. Ah, but with God, all oh, things are possible. <laughs> he said, I've already given you everything that you need that hey. pertains to this life and holy. I, I give you everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness. So I'm left without an excuse. I can be holy this morning if I want to. I can be perfect this morning if I want to. Come on. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. I thank God that he already gave me the power to live right. I don't have to fall if I don't want to fall. Hallelujah. I don't have to sing if I don't want to sing. He already made a way. He already made a way. Sometimes I think we forget just how powerful our God is. And just how strong our God is. 
The Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That means there is no devil from hell that can tear me down. Oh, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Can't nobody pluck me out of his hand. No. That's right. But I'm in Christ. Forever. Forever. Hey. That's why I said be steadfast. Yes. Be immovable. Always abandoned. Nothing can shake me up if I don't let it. I don't have to move if I don't want to move. Shut up on this. I don't have to be lost if I don't want to be lost. I don't serve no weak God. I don't serve no punk God. But my God is all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He holds the world in his hand. I heard a song the other day said, if he can hold the world, I know he can hold me. If he can hold the world, I know he can hold my moment. I know he can hold my situation. If he can, he can organize the stars and the planets. He can tell the clouds when they rain. He can tell the grass to grow. I know that he can keep me if I want to be kept. He can keep my mind. I don't have to let my mind run rampant, but I can guard my mind. Hallelujah, I can guard my mind. I can guard my heart. I can protect myself from the hands of the enemy. The devil don't have permission to just do what he wants to that's do right, in your life. That's right. I'm trying to let you know the devil can't just do whatever he wants to do in your life. Hallelujah, but you serve a God who is a protector, who is a keeper. And he has to get permission before he does anything to you. He can't just have free reign and do whatever he wants. He got to have permission to do anything. And if God allows it, it's going to be all right. Hey, his grace is sufficient. Paul said, I prayed three times to remove this service door from my side. But nevertheless, God said, my grace is sufficient. God said, I'll take you through yes. whatever you need to go through. Come on. The enemy can't just do whatever Lord, he wants. We, we submit to everything but God. God says, submit to him. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. He shall flee. There's not a question about it. If not, he might flee or he should flee, but he shall flee. Submit yourself to God. That's all you got to do. Submit yourself. Yes, hallelujah. God is a keeper. Yes, he is. But you have to choose to be kept. That's right. That's right. I said, my God is a keeper. Yes. But you have to choose to be kept. Yes. That's why I sang the song, I choose you again and again. You have to choose to be kept. I want to read a few scriptures because they always said, leave them with the word. You don't have to turn to these. I just want to read them for you. All right. In the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, in the 26th verse, it says that Moses stood in the gate of the camp, and he said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. In the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter, in the 15th verse, Joshua said, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Yeah. But as for me and my house, my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. Elijah in 1 Kings said, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long uh -huh. shall you halt between two yeah. of hey. If the Lord be God, follow oh, him. Yeah. But if Baal be God, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And then lastly, Jesus said in Matthew, No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. I present to you today, choose. Choose. Today. Because your soul is on the line. I said choose today because your soul is on the line. It's not your money. It's not your house. It's not the car that you're gambling with this morning. 
but it's your very soul that is on the line. Hallelujah. Your soul is at stake this morning, so you need to choose today. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve the devil? There is no in between. If you're not serving God, you're serving the devil. It's as simple as that. See, we get to this place that we think because we're not cutting goat's heads and we're not putting these symbols on our foreheads and we don't have the mark of the beast. We think that we're not serving the devil. But I'm here to let you know that if you're not being obedient to the word of God, you're serving the devil. So you need to choose today. Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? In Mark the 8th chapter, Jesus was talking to some people. And he said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I come to the realization that we do not value our soul the way that we should. We value these materialistic, tangible things that we can see, but I think because we can't see our soul inside of us, or we can't see that part of us, I think that that causes us to not value it as much as we should. You know that the term out of sight, out of mind. You know, when you don't see something all the time, you tend to not really care about it or appreciate it. But I need you to understand the worth of your soul today. Your eternal destination is on the line. Where will you spend eternity? We don't ask ourselves this question every day, but that should be the main thing on our mind. If I was to die right now, where would my soul spend eternity? I know we don't do the big things no more. We don't fornicate no more. We don't we don't drink no more. We don't commit adultery no more. We don't do those 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 big sins that we said. But the Bible says that it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Those little things that you're not really paying attention to, those little devices that the devil was just creeping in. And you're not even paying attention. You don't even see him working his way in there, but it's those little things. That is going to cause us to be lost. Do you value your soul? And the reason why I say that. Because if we truly valued our soul. We wouldn't compromise it for nothing. We should sing a song by Hezekiah Walker. said I'm sold out. But a lot of us is selling out. And we're selling out for naught. We're selling out for nothing. You talk about, you know how you get a good deal, you go to the store and you just, oh, this deal is just too good to be true. Yeah. Well, this deal is terrible. Because we're giving up our soul for nothing. For what? For pleasures of the flesh. For the lust of the mind, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. This is what we're giving up our soul for. For a few minutes of pleasure, we're willing to risk our eternal destination. For a few minutes of pleasure, we're willing to lose our soul. Jesus asked, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you going to give up in exchange for your soul? Is a girl worth your soul? Is a man worth your soul? Is pleasure, is it worth your soul? Choose today. Because your soul is on the line. I'm so glad that the minister brought out what he brought out this morning in the Sunday school lesson because it was part of my notes talking about the enemy. The enemy comes to do what? What does the Bible say? Comes to steal, kill, kill and destroy. And destroy. He's not coming to be your friend, Shante. He's not coming to comfort you. He's not coming to make you feel better. He's coming to kill you. And we are playing with the enemy. We play with the devil. We think he's our buddy because he makes us feel good. We do, do, do different temptations and do different different things. We think that he's our friend, but he's trying to kill you. My father, my, I heard my father preach the message a long time ago that the devil is not shooting any blanks, but he's shooting live bullets. And that is true in the day that we are living in. The devil is shooting and he's aiming to kill you. He's not playing with you. The enemy wants to kill you. 
He's going about seeking whom he may devour. That's what he's doing. He's looking and he's trying to pick off everybody that he can. That's his MO. That's his motive. That's what he's doing right now. And some of us, we have to learn, like he was saying this morning, we have to start learning to discern. We have to see the enemy for who he is. Because he'll come, I said, when you grow up, you have this picture of the devil being this big monster with horns in his head and a pitchfork and a long tail. But that's not how the devil comes to you. He'll come to you in the form of a friend. He'll, he'll come to you in the form of whatever it is he has to. The Bible says he can transform himself into an angel of light. The enemy is so deceptive. He's so sneaky. He's so deceiving. He'll do whatever he can to try to chip you up. So how do we combat that? What do we have to do? It's time for us to get serious, y'all. It's time for us to get serious and really choose. I know we said that we choose because we come to church every day and we come to church on Sunday and we, we do this and we do that and we got the title. But I, I'm talking about beyond the talking now. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's time out for talking now. It's time to really start living this thing. It's time to really, I mean, really make up in your mind that I'm going to live holy. I'm going to live right. I'm going to be righteous. I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to be everything that God has equipped me and he called me to be. Because as I said, you don't have to fall. That's right. You don't have to fail. You don't have to stumble. You don't have to slip. God said he can keep you and he can present you faultless. You don't have to fall. No. You don't have to fail. But it starts in your mind. You have to make up in your mind today that you know what? I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. I'm tired of living how I'm living. I'm tired of this because it's hell. It's torment. You can't even go to sleep peacefully at night. You can't afford to leave this building today not knowing where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. If you were to leave here. It's time to get serious. Yes, it is. It's time out for playing. It really is. It's time out for playing. It's time out for playing church. It's time out for faking church. Yes, Lord. It's time out for that. It's time out for just dressing and looking the part. But it's time for us to be who God is calling us to be. Because there are souls that are dying. There's a lost world out there. The Bible said that the harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. Where are the laborers this morning? Oh God! Where are the people that's willing to, to get out of their bed and pray in the middle of the night? Oh, Where's the people that are willing to push aside their plate and say, "I'm going to fast for you until you get the Holy Ghost"? Where are the laborers? The harvest is plenty. There's plenty of people that need to be saved. But where are the laborers? Where are the laborers? It's time for us to step up. Perfectly. It is time for us to step up. We can't keep just doing the same thing over and over and over. Y'all think we had these Sunday school lessons for no reason? Each lesson should have been helping you to grow a little bit more from Sunday to Sunday. We talked about progressive. We talked about being proactive. We talked about all these things. Yes, some of us are still in the same state we were in five weeks ago. Where's oh the God, help me, Jesus. It don't take God all day. It don't take God all year to elevate you. All you got to do is what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he'll exalt you. I'm not standing here to brag this morning, y'all. But if you can't see a change in me from two months ago, something's wrong with you. Say it again. I said if you can't see a change in me Come on. from two months ago, That's something right. is wrong with you. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because I made up my mind. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to walk this way. And I'm not going to just do it a couple of days. But I made it my mission that every single day of my life, Lord, I'm going to talk to you. Lord, I'm going to read your word. Lord, I'm going to get closer to you. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. Can't keep telling God to use me. And That's I'm just as full of junk. Can't keep saying, God, use me. And I don't got nothing to offer him. Oh. He needs a vessel. Oh my God! He needs a vessel. He said, "I'll take care of the rest. Just give me a vessel." Hey, hey! 
It can't be any old vessel. No. This vessel got to be clean. Yeah. This vessel got to be empty. So I had to pour myself out. I had to get myself out of the way. And I had to say, wash me, Lord. Cleanse me thoroughly, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Make me what you want me to be. And I didn't just do it on a Sunday. But when I got up on Monday, I had to do the same thing. When I got up on Tuesday, I had to do the same thing. When I got up on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I had to do the same thing. And look at me today. <laughs> look at me today. You can't tell me that God's not a keeper. You can't tell me that God won't do it. Because I did it for myself. I tried it for hey, myself. Oh my God. I, I tried it for Preach myself. It I know what God can do. He can change your heart if you yeah. want to. That's he can clean you up God. if you want to. He can take away the desire if you want him to. Oh, All you want to do is let him. Hallelujah. Let him. Here am I, Lord. Oh, yeah. Use me. Here am I, Lord. Yes. You need somebody, God? Come on. You Here can use me, yeah. Send me, Lord. Ah. You don't want to go out there, I'm sorry, but I'll go, Lord. Joy, you don't want to go with me, I'm sorry, but I'll go. Wife, if you don't want to go with me, I'm sorry, but Lord, send me. I'll go. I choose you, Lord. I choose you. She cannot have a son. I choose you. I choose you. It's more than just sin. It's an action behind it, Lord. I choose you. I won't just say yes to your will, Lord. I'm showing you because I give myself to you. I submit to your will. Have your way, Lord. These are things I say every day now, Lord. Have your will, Lord. Lead me and guide me by your will. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say it, Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go, Lord. Just leave me, Lord. I acknowledge you, Lord. So direct my path. I commit my ways to you, Lord. Lord, so make me, make me to know my hands. Show me, Lord. You already said if I just trust you and depend on you, you're going to take care of the rest. I choose you. I choose you. Choose you today. Oh, God. Who are you going to serve? I hope y'all get it. I hope y'all get it. I hope you get it. Choose today. Choose right now. Choose right now. Choose. Because your soul is on the line. And I heard they said that eternity is too long to be wrong. If you know that you're not living right, because you can come to church and still not be living right. If you know today that you're not living right, get it together before you leave. That's right. And you you, you can't you can't sin to try to fix another sin. You can't use one sin to try to cover up another sin. It don't work that way. You just digging yourself deeper. That's just like a person who keeps who keeps taking out loans to get out of debt. Come on. You ain't never gonna get out of debt. Never. If you keep taking out loans, mm. Mm. so you can't use one sin to cover up it's another sin. <laughs> but I know a man mm. who says, "Though your sins yeah. be as scarlet, <laughs> though they be red as crimson, he said that I'll wash you." Why? He said that I'll wash you. And Melinda, he said that I'll wash you. Uncle T.R., he said that I'll wash you. White and snow. Hey, just come up to me. Good God. He said, all day long, I just cut my head. Just come. I stand knocking at the door. If any man wants to come and something, just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Yes. That's not just for sinners. That's for us that need to get back where we used come to be. On, please. Just come. Please. Please. That's not just for the right sinner. That's for us that need to get ourselves together. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just 
God gave us a warning. He said, seek me. Why am I going to Don't let it be said too late for you. Don't let it be said too late. He said, my spirit will never always strive with man. Yes, his mercy is everlasting. Yes, but it will run after you. Seek me while I can be found. He said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Don't keep trying to say, I can wait. I'm not ready yet. Don't do it. 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 Don't keep trying to say, all right, I just need to take care of this first. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Come now while he's knocking at your door. Come right now while he's knocking at your door. Come right now. Come home. Come home. You know what I'm really? Come home. It's an earnestly tackle Jesus is calling. Sinners. Come on home. Just come home. Father, are you Hallelujah. Come home before it's too late. The door is always about to be shut. The bridegroom is coming. Come on. They knocked on the ark. They said, no. When God shuts the door, as much as I love you, I can't open that door when God shuts the door. As much as I love you, I can't open that door when God shuts the door. But while the door is open, while you have a chance, I don't care what you've done. That's right, that's right. I don't care what you've done. God said that I can forgive your sins. And I'll throw them in the sea of forgiveness. I won't judge you. I won't look down on you. But I love you. Let's go. He said his love. It covers the multitude of sins. Been made. The cry has been made. Just come. Choose me. God said, Why die? When you can live. When you can live. Why die when you can live? Why take the chance? He said that I already I took it for ya. I hung it on the cross for you. I took the whips. I took. I took everything. I died for you. So why die? Why? There had to be a price that was paid. And Jesus said, "I'll pay the price for you. I've already died for you. Why die? Why? Why die?" The cry's been made. Just come. Some of y'all still sitting there when you should have already been up here by now. But I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. But I'm here to let you know that the cry has been made. The cry has been made. The cry has been made. God has spoken. Hallelujah. The cry has been made. Just come. Just come. Don't worry about what people are going to say. Don't worry about what people are going to think. Just come. Don't worry about what anybody else is going to do. Don't worry about what people are going to expect of you. Just come. And let me take care of the rest.